Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Demon Souls. I know it's been a while since Demon Souls was around, but you know, the Scholar of the First Sin patch update thing it came out for Dark Souls, so I was kind of like busy with that. Alright, we're gonna start off by leveling up. I already went ahead and deposited all my um, access equipment to... what's his name? Stockpile Thomas. The one we're gonna start off with is, since I'm close, I might as well get my dexterity to 18 to eventually get to the requirements for that weapon that I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna put one more point into vitality and... Do I want intelligence? I don't know. I could go for faith, because technically I would need... Actually, you know what? Let's go for endurance. <clears throat> Alright, in this episode, I'm gonna go ahead and return to Boletaria. This second area of Boletaria is pretty easy. Generally, if you go to any other area um, and you upgrade your weapons a little bit, this area is gonna be pretty simple. I deposited both the Crescent Falchion and the Crisp Blade, and I withdrew the Mercury Rapier, because I feel like that's gonna be more useful in this area. The Mercury Rapier... I do have a couple of mercury stones. Unfortunately, I cannot upgrade it because this blacksmith in the Nexus is only for like uh, standard equipment. So he can make your equipment like quality and crushing and things like that. But he cannot like enchant it with fire or poison or magic and things like that. But I think I'm going to be sticking with the secret dagger mostly. Of course, I've been here before. Uh, the only thing is, as you can see, these guys go down much easier. They're still annoying, but luckily at this point they don't do too much damage to me. Even though they're they're impaling me with like a six foot long spear. And it seems like they're dropping stuff pretty frequently. And I'm happy about that. No complaints there. Alright, there are like two more of these guys. Yeah, something like that. You know, you want to kill them because you never know when these upgrade stones are going to become useful. <clears throat> this one is a bit more of a problem because... Well, actually not that much more. Okay. Next order of business is to... Go ahead and go... Oh, hey, what? what is this? Oh, it's half moon grass. Fuck, I didn't know, even know that was there. Well, you learn something new every day. Hey, look who that is. Hello. You yonder. Over here. It's me, Ostrava. Hello, Ostrava. Again surrounded by evil warriors. Could you perhaps help me one last time? Clear out the soldiers at the far end of the Yeah, park, it's like just down yonder. Has yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, we're going to have to save him again. And don't worry, it is not the last time we're going to have to save him. Um Ostravo is kind of like, I guess Siegmeier in that you always have to like rescue him from something. Yeah, it's kind of like somewhere between Siegmeier and Solaire. Ostravo is pretty awesome. So, of course, I've been here before I showed you. I think I came here to get the wooden catalyst, didn't I? Where is that fucking dragon? There we go. Oh, shit, I got hit. Doesn't matter, because it like, doesn't do that much damage. Weirdly getting, like, crushed by a dragon doesn't kill you. Okay, I'm, I am going to use a half moon grass before... Moving on here. Oh, fuck. These enemies are much easier because it's mainly the amount of damage I can deal to them. Yeah, I take them out in like three hits. And as you can see, this dagger is very quick in attacking. You can just spam it. Daggers are definitely very powerful in this game. Generally, I would say that out of all the Souls games, this one probably has the most, like, OP weapons. Okay, now, 
here we are down here. If we go this way, we should be fine. Eventually, gonna have to switch to the Mercury Rapier. Because there's gonna be a pretty difficult... No, not path, but a couple of difficult enemies coming up. They're trying to ambush me. I guess it kind of worked because I took damage. God, I should be more careful. I don't have that much HP. Well, sometimes it's best to just go in and cut them down. Especially since they're dropping Crescent Moon Grass left and right, which is going to be pretty useful because I can just top myself off. Hey, bolts. And a Soldier's Lotus, which is kind of useless. Oh, there's two more. <laughs> Holy shit. Ring of Gash Resistance. Unfortunately, just like in Dark Souls, because this game only has two ring slots, many of these, like, resistance rings Thank you. aren't that helpful at all. Twice. It's like... Thanks to you, I can now forge ahead. This is a token of my gratitude. Please accept it. And he gives us Dark Moon Grass. You can probably tell that there are a lot of uh, Dark Moon references in this game, which of course appear in Dark Souls with the Dark Moon Covenant. But the thing is, yeah, because there are only two ring slots in this game, it's like, what's the point of sacrificing a ring, a ring slot just to wear like a protective ring against, like, which is only useful in certain situations? What I might want to do is... Hmm. I already have the Thieves Ring. We can go for Clever Rat. It doesn't matter, really. There's no such thing as, like, a Ring of Blades in this game, which just, like, increases your attack power. There is a Stamina Ring, but it is very difficult to get. It's probably held by one of the most difficult enemies in this game. Probably tougher than 90% of the bosses here. Alright. <clears throat> and we should be coming up to that place that I was talking about. Pick up a soul. Maybe if I can snipe them. That would be helpful. Basically, there, there is a pack of like three or four dogs. Yes. Okay, this is gonna work. And, if you remember from um, the Stonefang Mines, dogs are incredibly annoying and they deal a shit ton of damage because there is no poise in this game. Luckily, with the rapier you can just hold your shield up and kill them. And if you don't have magic or like arrows or something, that is probably the most efficient way of taking them out. So yeah, it's always worth grabbing a rapier just for this situation. And look who we have right here. Okay, let's see what he sells. Late Moon Gra he does sell turpentine. How many of these do I have? I have three of them. And that's... I, the thing is, that is enough. Like, three of them is gonna be enough for now. He does sell Late Moon Grass, though. Long Sword, Short Spear, bunch of... Hmm... What do I? What shield do I have? I have the buckler, don't I? Could grab the soldier's shield. I'm sorry. Let's check out this buckler. On the damage reduction. Oh, it's 90-30. But look at the weight. It's 2.5, and the soldier shield is. The soldier shield is actually lighter. Well, it has 90-30 as well. I guess then it doesn't matter. Might as well get the soldier's shield. Thank Unless I already have one of these. Then I'm just kind of wasted. Oh, it needs 10 strength. But it does have more guard break reduction. So, I think that was a worth... A purchase that was worth it. Um, yeah. Gotta take your lighter equipment. You never know when you're gonna be overburdened. And basically going under there with the dogs and everything does save you a journey through one of these dragon paths. Which can be helpful. You know, you, you have less shit to deal with. Oh, you just went flying. 
compound short bow. The compound bows are, I think they have less range, but they deal more damage. But they need more strength, so yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that, use that just yet. I also have the compound longbow. What's really interesting is you can like see a city down here, which, I don't know, it's just a really nice detail. <coughs> and of course you can see the, I'll actually, you cannot see it from here. If you angle it right, you can see the tower. The basically our goal far off in the distance there. There's a fog wall. Oh shit. Ah oh, fuck. I thought they were thought they had their back turned. Fucking crossbow guys. No one likes crossbow guys. Tell you that much. Except I was a crossbow guy on my last Dark Souls playthrough. Because I used the heavy crossbow. But you know, what can you do? Oh, yeah. Fucking dragon interrupted my aiming there. I think if you like stand right here. This is where like the edge of his damage range is. Okay, good. This is the most difficult um, run. Well, not the most difficult, the one you have the least time in. So you really want to be fast rolling if you're gonna do this. Oh fuck, I, as you can see I accidentally did the stupid backstab, or backstab thing of the rapier. And we have a knight to, to deal with. Who does have quite a bit of HP. But yeah, as you can see, oh, he's poisoned. I'm gonna be able to get some healing items here. Oh, fuck. Thank you, poison. Some half moon grass. Let me try running out here. You can gra grab some of these treasures, and once you kill the dragons, you can just come back here and collect all of these. And another knight. Fuck. Dodged a little bit too late, I think. Yeah. Or am I dodging too early? I can never tell. Anyways, he's poisoned, and these guys lie to Turtle. They can heal themselves, but as you can see, the poison even works on them, so their healing items become half as effective as well. So yeah, he's dead. Up some half moon grass, and we can get going here to this little secret area. Well, I guess it's not that secret. It's kind of like a little... Oh, fuck. Ah, there is a crystal lizard here. I didn't even know. Well, it's dead now. And we get a heart stone. Yeah, one thing about this game is that uh, sometimes like upgrade materials seem to be tied to certain areas as well. So in Boletaria, you're mainly mainly gonna find like hard stone for and sharp stone for like the standard upgrade path. And in places like the Shrine of Storms, you're gonna find a lot of blade stone for like katanas and shit. And so yeah, they're kind of tied to like each area. And in the fifth area, which I haven't went to, haven't gone to the Valley of Defilement, you're gonna find things like bleed weapon equipment or upgrade paths and there's also this weird upgrade path for daggers called critical which I'm not gonna go for because what it does is basically it reduces the damage of your dagger but it increases the critical damage it does so I guess that could be useful in uh, PvP if you're good at like parrying and backstabbing And look who it is. It is a fucking Boulder Knight. But is it a Boulder Knight? No, wait, the Boulder Knights are... I'm thinking of the Berenique Knights. In Dark Souls. So yeah, the 
Berenice Knights in Dark Souls, and I think even maybe like the Imperious Knights in Dark Souls 2 are a reference to this boss in Demon's Souls known as the Tower Knight. And of course, there is a Tower Shield in every Souls game, which is also a reference to this boss. Kind of an interesting enemy. He does have some ranged attacks. He has kind of like a lance weapon. And of course a huge shield. But first, what we need to start off with is to run around and kill all of these crossbow. Oh shit, I got hit by the magic. Normally the magic tends to be pretty inaccurate, so... Uh, normally you shouldn't have to worry too much about him doing damage to you. But still. And just get around here and I think we have one more. And luckily with this guy you have plenty of safe spots throughout the map. So if you want to just like take a break and hide, you're perfectly fine to do that. He's not going to do much. What I want to do is get some turpentine in here. Buff my weapon up. And get going. So basically, the deal with this guy is... You have to attack his feet. He kind of works like the uh, Iron Golem in Dark Souls in that you can make him fall over. The only difference is, unlike the Iron Golem who takes normal damage, this guy takes like massively reduced damage on his feet. And yeah, I would say that his attacks are probably the most similar to the last giants in Dark Souls 2. That he has these foot stomps and everything. Oh, there he goes. You have to be careful when he falls. Oh, fuck. Okay, this is not good. So he fell over and I cannot get to his head easily. But once you do... This guy is basically done. His head is extremely weak to any type of damage. And like I said, once you have an upgraded weapon, he just gets destroyed. This guy is only really a challenge and... Believe me, he is a challenge if you come here, like, straight away. You do this as your second area. Yeah, he's gonna give you a uh, run for your money. But other than that, he's pretty easy. Okay, let's move on. Of course, we cannot. So as you can see, our path is b blocked. Um, to get beyond this fog gate, we're gonna need to s do some stuff. Well, the main requirement is you have to clear one of the other worlds, like, completely. And once you do that, this path is gonna unlock and allow you further access into Boletaria. But, for right now, we're gonna head back into the Nexus here. I can f what I did forget to do, which I sometimes tend to forget because uh, I forget that equipment doesn't automatically repair itself, unlike in Dark Souls 2 is to repair my shit, because things like armor especially break easily in this game, for some reason. And once they're fully broken, they are pretty expensive to repair, so I'd rather just, like, t keep up with it. Okay, so we're gonna deposit all our shit, and what else did I pick up? Mercury Rapier, I wanna keep around. I'm gonna get some strength to be able to wield this um, soldier shield. Since I need to go for strength anyways. Hey, I can get one more level. Let's go for more strength. Yes, I'm done. And now what we can do is make the switch. Kinda looks like the Iron Parma from Dark Souls 2. But alright, we're good. And I'm just gonna get rid of the buckler here. Okay, good. Have a heart of gold. I can forge. The final thing I wanna do is... No, no, that's not what I wanna do. What I wanna do is get some arrows in here. Yeah, let's get something like... This, whatever. Arrows are very cheap in this game. Oh, and I remember I forgot to do something, and I always remember too late. We now res rescued, what's his name? Sage Frake. 
then I was right to bend the rules and teach you a few tricks. Nevertheless, I'm grateful to you. Do you see how important selfless acts are in this dreary world? Yeah, you're still an asshole, kind of. Okay, from now on, these guys are basically not gonna be... Better than having you bother Sage Freight. Oh, he does actually give more magic. Huh. Weird. I didn't think he'd actually do that. Oh, uh, he does sell enchant weapon. Hmm. I see. I might be able to get that a little bit later. Hmm. I have a proposal for you. Could you bring your demon souls to me? As I determine more about the essence of the soul, I can teach you new magic. A demon soul is no mere amalgamation of lesser souls. You have your wits about you. Surely you understand me. So yeah, this guy is basically like a uh, trade. You can trade your demon souls in order to get magic. Soul Ray is a very good spell actually and they're free too once you hmm no reason not to get it now see with this I'm kind of wondering because you can also make a pretty cool bow from the soul of this guy warding this these two are basically like magic barrier and great magic barrier might be able to get warding as well and yeah, no reason not to I mean they're free so who cares and we might want to get rid of Flame Toss, since I never used Flame Toss and get Soul Ray in here. And maybe... Oh, okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. Bring me more. Let's see, Soul Ray is supposed to be... Yeah, it deals a ton of damage, Soul Ray, and it hardly costs any MP, so... This is definitely a favorite among uh, players who use magic. And I'm definitely going to be making good use of it. Hey, Ostrava is here. Might as well talk to him. At its peak, Boletaria was a grand kingdom. The king, his knights, and his subjects were modest and plain, but also steadfast and compassionate. In the distant southern kingdom, Boletaria was known as paradise on earth. But look at what has become of us now. I refuse to it's not looking too good, is it? For our great land. And here is his kind of like first hint that he is not just like Ostrava, he is actually Prince Here Ostrava. Boletaria, we speak of the legend of the two swords and the last hero. The two swords are Demon Brand and Soul Brand. One sword banishes that which befouls man, and the other banishes man himself. The last hero is old King Doran. King Doran is the everlasting one, founder of Boletaria and protector of the two swords. <laughs> of course, only according to legend. But in the dark state of our land, legends are all we can depend upon. Yeah, I'm sure none of that is true. Well, actually, I'm just going to spoil it. It is. So, Demon Brand and Soul Brand are kind of like, I guess I wouldn't call them like ultimate weapons, but they're kind of secret weapons you can pick up. Um, I'm not sure which one is which, but basically the thing with them is that they go off of your character tendency. So if you're a good guy, you want to use, I think, Demon Brand. Or, see, I never know which one is which. Uh, one of them, as your character tendency goes towards white, it... Um, deals more damage and the other one as your character tendency goes towards black it deals more damage and if you're neutral I think both of them do zero damage <coughs> character tendency I, d I don't think that's a mechanic I've talked about too much but first let's discuss this area this is the valley of defilement essentially this is demon souls version of blight town it is pretty hellish um, not this part of it, but the second part of this area is... Ugh, just hate it. Um, but you know, we gotta get through it. Ouch, headbutt. Gotta get through it, and... Yeah, we might as well get going. So, lots of narrow ledges. Lots of places you can fall off. Plenty of poison. 
um, status effects and all that other fun stuff we all love to hate. Luckily, these guys are not too difficult as enemies. Certainly not as annoying as the actual enemies in Blight Town. But some of them do lie in ambush like this, pretend to be dead. So you want to keep an eye on not getting backstabbed. Oh shit, oh. I was worried that I just went the wrong way. Because <clears throat> falling off here is bad news. Um, obviously you're going to end up getting killed. We also want to drop down here. Somebody's having a great time laughing. But I'm gonna wipe that smile off his face in a little bit. I think this is like a broken... Oh yeah, there is a hole here. Crescent moon grass and... Not really much else. There's only like really one thing. Hey, Ring of Magical Dullness. I already have the Ring of Magical Sharpness. I'm assuming this one does the... Opposite. Yeah, Lord's magic power raises magic defense. So I guess if you have both of these equipped, um, they do nothing. They cancel each other out. But it is pretty interesting. A lot of the rings in this game come in sets. Which, you know, it's pretty cool. You have, like, contra contrasting rings. I, I nearly died. I am dead. Fuck, I should have healed up. Ah, uh, goddammit. I forgot, because I thought that part where the roof crashes, or roof collapses, is a bit further in. But apparently it's not. Well, back to the cling ring we go. Goddamn, that was like a bad death. Alright, let's get rid of the turpentine. So yeah, I haven't really talked about character tendency in this game. It's another, it's another kind of, like, obscure mechanic. There are no, like, explanations of it anywhere in the game. But basically, just how you have world tendency, your character can also shift from white and black. The only thing is... how these mechanic, me mechanics work. So basically, if you... I think if you, like, um, invade other players. So if you... Invade as a black phantom. You will go towards black character world or character tendency. And it, this can also be accomplished by, I think, killing NPCs. And if you want to move towards white character tendency, as you can see, Soul Ray is... Oh, and it can... Oh, it can pierce enemies. That's why people like it. Um, white character tendency, I think you move towards by... Oh, fuck. This is what I'm talking about, all this poison. Luckily, we have a couple of royal lotuses, not as many as I thought I had. Which is kind of shitty. But since um, online isn't really that active anymore in this game, except for like certain times, it's not completely dead. Most people like tend to stay in neutral character tendency. Which means that those two weapons, Soul Brand and Demon Brand, aren't that widely used. I'm not saying they're completely useless. Oh, I thought that was an enemy for a second. They're not completely useless, but they're definitely not as popular as they once were. Alright, I think this one is for sure an ambush. Oh no, yes, yes he is. He just wasn't waking up. Oh, where did you come from? The grab move they do is very similar to what those enemies do in Blight Town. Except the grab move doesn't actually like one-shot you like it does in Dark Souls. God, that's so fucking annoying. It's because it stuns you. And there's no way to get out of it. Okay, so we're gonna do things differently now that I know that this is here. This is gonna be our method. Arrows. Actually, I could just use magic. 
Probably don't need a soul ray. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. Oh, fuck that mist. Where are these assholes coming from? You know what? Let's just go and kill them. Okay, this was a... Am I dead again? This was a bad idea. Uh, why am I having so much trouble with this part of the game? Oh, and I'm already 30 minutes in. Alright, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna end the episode here and just get back to that place off screen. And we can try again and hopefully for the third time I'm gonna be able to succeed. There's four Royal Lotuses here. Didn't even know that. That's definitely helpful. Alright, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Demon's Souls. And I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.